Hello, this is Dr. Rebecca Wood, your instructor, and this is our week six lecture, Violence and Injustice, in which we are going to discuss some events that cause people to lose the American dream and their lives in the Gateway City. We first begin with a writer named Carlos Hurd. He was a journalist who wrote about the Titanic disaster. He worked for the St. Louis Post-Dispatch for many years, and one of the biggest stories he ever encountered was the sinking of the Titanic. And he encountered this story completely by chance. He and his wife were on vacation sailing on the SS Carpathia, a ship that was on hand to rescue survivors of the Titanic disaster. And this is a picture of the Titanic sinking and the people in the lifeboats. And if you know anything about the Titanic, you know that many, many people drowned because there were not enough lifeboats for that ship. Carlos Hurd also wrote about the East St. Louis riot. And when you read his account of that riot, it is um, extremely disturbing. He witnessed the riots firsthand, feeling helpless to stop the violence, even though he tried. So he did actually risk him, his life to try to help people and to save them from the riot, but he was unable to do it. Um, Heard was there when the guardsmen from the 4th Illinois finally put a stop to the violence under the command of Colonel Stephen Tripp. So um, he was there and he reported on what happened. And this is a picture from the St. Louis Today or St. Louis Post-Dispatch Online archives of the fires the night of the riot near the East St. Louis Public Library. W.E.B. Du Bois was one of the founders of the NAACP who worked for and still work for equal opportunity and freedom of speech. And W.E.B. Du Bois and a colleague visited East St. Louis after the riot to try to find out what happened and to produce a report hoping that possibly events like this could be prevented in the future. Dr. Du Bois asked many questions in his essay uh, questions without an easy answer. Um, these are rhetorical questions, and in this case, um, those easy answers or even hard answers are still elusive. He wrote, How far may men fight for the beginning of comfort, out beyond the horrid shadow of poverty, at the cost of starving other and what the world calls lesser men? How far may those who reach up out of the slime that fills the pits of the world's damned compel men with loaves to divide with men who starve? And unfortunately, it does appear that there are still issues with um, inequality to the point that people are dying either violently or um, by starvation because of the way the world is working now and back then as well. And this... This is just a sampling of the life's work of W.E.B. Du Bois, um, The Black Reconstruction in America and the Souls of Black Folk. And these books are available now from Amazon. Um, there's also quite a bit of scholarship about his life and his work. So if you're interested, he would be a good figure to study for the future. Some of the things that happened in our reading assignments this week are related to World War I, which happened from 1914 to 1918. Millions of people died in that war, and it affected the history of the entire world. And unfortunately, even though it was considered the war to end all wars at the time, about 20 years later, there was another World War, World War II, but we will not go into that this week. And then also there was the Great Depression, the stock market crash of 1929, which caused many, many people to lose their jobs. People committed suicide because they lost all of their savings and all of their investments and basically went from either comfortable or wealthy to extremely poor. And so this is a picture of some of the scenes from the Great Depression, and you've probably seen that in movies and heard about it before, but the Great Depression affected many, many people all over the world, including, of course, the United States. A. E. Hotchner's family was affected by the Great Depression. He was born in St. Louis in 1920. 
He attended Soldan High School, which, as we all have kind of thought about, uh, St. Louis has that question that people ask you where you went to high school. So I like to include that if I know that about our St. Louis authors. He graduated from Washington University and Washington University Law School. He served in World War II, so he was affected by World War II. But of course, he lived and became a journalist and a writer, and he developed close personal friendships with Ernest Hemingway, about whom he wrote a book, and Paul Newman, with whom um, they started Newman's Own. And so whenever you buy that salad dressing with Newman, Paul Newman's face on it, uh, that's also A.E. Hotchner behind that salad dressing and the money for or the proceeds from that salad dressing or whatever, maybe salsa purchase, go to charity um, because of A.E. Hotchner and Paul Newman and their friendship. A.E. Hotchner later became well-respected and quite successful. There's a really nice video that I found that I posted for you to watch about him, if you would like. He experienced poverty as a child in St. Louis, writing about the problems the family had paying rent, buying food, and trying to get health care. And this is a quote from his work. So there was my poor mother dying from this toothache and my father without five cents to pay a dentist. Also, one look at the bread box with its lid off, getting sunned, and I knew it was another night of no food. And so, unfortunately, some of the problems that A.E. Hotchner wrote about are still in existence in, in varying degrees. And so, um, unfortunately, we haven't discovered the solutions to all of those problems yet either. And this is a... Um, this is actually two pictures of Kings Highway and Del Mar today. This is the intersection at which the hotel um, that A.E. Hotchner and his family lived for a time and that he wrote about in the excerpt from King of the Hill. And I look at these pictures and I wonder whether St. Louis has become more prosperous or slightly more prosperous or what since um, his writing. So anyway, I leave you with this image and this week I realized was not a comfortable week of reading or things to think about, but unfortunately history is not all always good and many times people do not write when they're happy. They write when there are things to address and problems and um, tragedies. So I leave you with that and I hope that you personally have a good week. Thank you.